This video is part of a first course in modelling analysis and control and gives an introduction to modelling. What is a model then? Is it a toy we've made with Lego? Maybe it's a schematic drawing in engineering such as this one here of a rocket. Or maybe it's a mental model we've got of how something works. Let's look at an example. We want to link the air or fluid flow through a straw to its length and cross-sectional area. And you can think of this as a drinking example. Get yourself a straw, put it in a glass and try and drink. So can I drink more quickly with a fat straw or a thin straw? Can I drink more quickly if I have a long straw or a short straw? And again, I emphasize, try this at home, cut some straws up, mix them around and try it for yourself. Are two straws better than one? And what is the model which we're going to form which links the straw length and area to the fluid flow? And I want you to do this by yourself and convince yourself you understand what's going on. Now, is this a mental model or possibly could it be something more precise? So let's look at flow through straws more as an engineer. Flow is proportional to the cross-sectional area A, so we can write an equation something like F, the flow, equals some constant K1 times the cross-sectional area A. Flow is also inversely proportional to the length. We can write an equation something like flow equals K2 over L, where L is the length. If we combine these two, we get a final equation something like flow equals some constant times the area divided by the length. This is clearly a mathematical model. Modelling principles in engineering then. What is a model? A model is simply a collection, and we need to emphasise this, it's a collection of all the statements you can make about a given system. For example, any component equations such as voltage equals current times resistance or force is mass times acceleration. Common sense observations, such as whether points share the same velocity, speed, current, or something similar. Balance equations, and balance equations are often based on things like flow, volume, energy, and so forth. These statements need not be purely expressed as equations, but in general they will be, as these are convenient to handle and analyse. So here's an example. How do we model the rate of climb or descent of an aircraft? Now, key data and equations are likely to be things like what's the mass of the aircraft and acceleration due to gravity? What's the dependence of lift on forward speed, V, angle of attack, profile and air density? And you'll see I'm going to give you an equation that lift is some constant times the air density times velocity squared. What's the friction term which resists vertical speed? And here we're just going to call it B dy dt, where y is the vertical displacement. Now, if lift exceeds weight and friction together, the aircraft will climb. So using Newton's law, we have basically mass times acceleration. There you are, mass times d2y dt squared. Sorry, there's a mistake there. That should be dt squared equals lift. That's L minus mass times acceleration due to gravity minus friction. So you see, what have we done here? We've grouped a number of observations together to form this model. What about the temperature of a baby in an incubator? What do we need to know? Well, we need to know the external temperature, Te, and the rate of heat transfer through the walls of the incubator that's likely to be something like, you can see I've written it here, some constant times the temperature in the incubator minus the external temperature. The heat generated by the baby and any heater inside the incubator. <coughs> so there we've got B for baby and WE heat generated, uh, sorry, by the heater. And then what's the mass or specific heat of the incubator and the baby combined and therefore how much energy is stored? So we've got the specific heat C times the temperature T. Now we come up with a balance equation. The heat flow in minus the heat flow out is going to be the rate of change of heat stored. And you end up with an equation here. And again, what do you see that we've done? We've implicitly grouped a number of observations together to form this model. 
Now here's another example which I'm not going to dwell on, but it's a biochemical reaction. And what do you see again? A number of observations can be made, and we group these together and get a mathematical model. Here's an example on aerospace structures, and you can see there's a number of slightly more complicated observations down here which can be combined together to form a model. What about platoons of autonomous vehicles, which is becoming increasingly popular and likely to be on our roads in just a few years' time? Well, here you can see there's a lot of different components going on. So what you're going to have to do is write a separate equation observation for each component, group them all together and form a model. So modelling principles, what do we need to do? Write down all the identities and observations you can about the system. The key word here is all. Combining these gives the model which defines the system. Now in an introductory module you will only get elementary examples which require you to identify just two to three equations which will often be obvious and you should be confident with deriving models of common systems. So here's the key thing. All engineers, it doesn't matter what discipline you are, all engineers are expected to know models for simple engineering systems, even if you can't derive them all. And I would recommend and make a list and keep it in your, in your book somewhere on your notes. So what we're going to do now is give a few core examples. Now this is going to be done very quickly because clearly if you want slower and more complete introductions, that's in the notes and resources for this week, which is obviously where we're encouraging you to go. Resistance to flow then, and this could be an electrical current or fluid, or indeed it could be heat. So what is the link between the flow through a straw with a pressure supply and the current in a circuit containing a voltage supply and a single resistance? And then what happens if you have two straws in parallel or two resistors in parallel? as you see I've got here. So perhaps if I add, so we've got a flow here going through a straw, or we've got a current I, sorry, I've not done my eye very well, going through this electrical circuit. So can you write any equations which demonstrate a link between these two apparently different systems? Well, here we have it. So the flow through straw one is the pressure difference divided by some constant. The flow through straw 2 is the pressure difference divided by some constant. So you can see the overall flow is the flow through straw 1 plus the flow through straw 2. What about the electrical circuit? The current through resistor 1 is the voltage divided by the resistance. The current through resistor 2 is the voltage divided by the resistance. And again you see the overall current therefore is the current through resistor 1 plus the current through resistor 2. And what do you notice? We've got analogous expressions and models for what appear to be very different systems. What about resistors and springs? So here you can see I've got two springs in parallel and I've written down here the equation that you get. Okay, so there's the equation that you get um, for this system. So what I've done is I've said the force is shared across the springs and the springs have the same displacement because they're in parallel. And that's how I've derived this equation. You can see I've got force 1 plus force 2. Now, what if I've got two resistors in series? Now here, you see the voltage is shared across the resistors. And the key thing I want you to notice here is the analogous statements. Force is shared across springs, voltage shared across resistors. Displacement of the springs is the same, current through the resistors is the same. So what do you notice? You've got analogous statements and models. Look at this model here, look at this model here. You can see they've got the same mathematical structure. What about two springs in series then? So here the springs are going to share the same force. So you get the extension in spring 1 and the extension in spring 2. And the key thing here is what does this model remind you of? Well, it reminds you of string of straws and resistors in parallel. Can you see though sorry, it's gone too quick, that this equation here has the same structure as this equation here 
and this equation here. So they're analogous systems. Now common analogies are things like resistors in parallel are analogous to springs in series because resistors in parallel share the same voltage and current is divided. Springs in sh series share the same force and displacement is divided. Similarly, resistors in series are analogous to springs in parallel because resistors in series share the same current and voltage is divided. And springs in parallel share the same displacement and the force is divided. So some conclusions. Obviously, this has been very quick because this is an introduction. And what you need to do is now go through the resources provided and familiarise yourself with how to model simple engineering systems and components and to represent the behaviour through groups of equations. Think about analogies between different engineering disciplines. For example, in what way are fluid systems, heating systems, mechanical systems and electrical systems analogous? Now, understanding analogies is the most important learning outcome of the week, as this enables efficiency in the long term and insight. And the key thing is if you understand one discipline, you get the rest for free. Now, final reminder, keep up with your Blackboard quizzes, tutorial sheets and bring any questions to the contact sessions or obviously put them on Blackboard discussions.